I'll tell you what went very quickly is selecting the narrator. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Head and shoulders above everything we found on ACX. It was like, that's the storyteller right there. That's the guy. Christopher and Ethan Westhoff, welcome. It's so good to meet you. We worked on the, the audio book together. Uh, we're, now, we're, we're in three different time zones right now. I'm just outside London. Whereabouts are you two? Go ahead, Dad. <laughs> All right. I'm uh, in just south of Houston, Texas, where it is really, really summertime at the moment. And Ethan? I'm in uh, northeast Ohio, where it's 48 degrees. <laughs> That's Fahrenheit, so that's cold. Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, yep. So yeah. It's, uh, Ohio has not figured out summer, spring, or anything other than winter. <laughs> right. There's just different degrees. There's just warmer versions of winter at certain months. That's right. I that's see. That's right. It snowed, in, uh, it snowed April 1st, actually. Did it really? Goodness me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so we should also cool. point out that, you know, the more observant viewer will notice that you have the same last name, your father and son. So... Did you all grow up in Texas together? No. What's no. the story then? Where did you grow up? Let's start with you, Dad. So I grew up in Colorado, but I joined the Marine Corps, the United States Marine Corps, very early on, uh, straight out of high school. And so Ethan is actually a Hawaiian. You're born and in Hawaii. All, all four of my yeah. children are born in different U.S. states. Because the army, well, the military moved you around. The Marines moved you around. Every three years. Wow. So that's like being a radio disc jockey. <laughs> it's a similar kind of life. Um, oh, yeah, we did the same job. Wow. How about that? And so you, you were, what kind of stuff were you reading then? As you, was your dad in the military as well? Oh, no. My dad grew up in the Vietnam era, so he had a very different view of the military. As a matter of fact, when the recruiter came to see me, my mother, who was an army brat, uh, asked the, the recruiter come in civilian clothes and meet us at a park so that my father would not have an instant negative reaction. So he was an old hippie then, a peacenik? A bit of a hippie. So how did it go down with him when you joined the Marine Corps? Um, I was not a good kid in school. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the tales in Curious Tales is a true story about my freshman year. And so I was a, a bit of a retrobate, reprobate in high school. And so they turned me around. And once I came back and he saw how good it was, he was uh, very accepting. And it's good because... I have five younger brothers, and four of them also went in the military. Wow. And was that story, the one in the book, in Curious Tales, was that book learning? Mm-hmm. So there's, tell, me, tell me the true story of that, because I know, I know the story that I read. <laughs> what, what's the true story that it's based on? So when I was growing up, I thought that Christopher was a bit of a nerd name. So I named the, the character in there Arthur, which is used to be a cool name. But, yeah. uh, and uh, I decided many times, actually, in my first year in high school that I was not going to stay at school. And so I'd go off and go down to the Colorado River, which was very close by. And uh, one time I, I took my friend's pistol and I was shooting down at the that logs that were floating in the river and and i came back and i forgot to take it out of my pants and went to school I, oh, so many times that uh i i went into the principal's office with that pistol still tucked in the waistband of my trousers <laughs> right i see how the story was then so what sort of stuff were you reading then as a younger as a younger man oh uh everything that edgar rice burroughs uh, Frank, a lot of a Tolkien. I read Tolkien when I was six or seven. I read The Hobbit. Yeah. So a lot of that stuff. Right. And then you meet Ethan's mom. How did you meet Ethan's mom? Second grade. Really? Second grade. Childhood sweetheart? No, she hated me. I told you I was a bad kid. And for <laughs> very good reason. She she loathed me until our senior year, and then we've been married uh, 
just after Ethan's birthday will be 30 years. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. So, Ethan, you're born into a military family. Did you get the feeling that you would go into the Marine Corps from, from a very young age? I did. I think I was uh, like five or six drawn Marine Corps blues and stuff on class homework and things like that. I think I flirted with the idea of doing something different. And then by the time I got to high school, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. So, Christopher, you must have felt a tremendous proud then, a pride then when Ethan decided, yeah, this is what I want to do too, knowing how it changed your life for the better. Well, I was uh, I was actually kind of surprised because Ethan was, uh, I don't know, he's always been a little bit reserved. Uh, people ask me that, are you proud? Absolutely. They say, uh, well, your son's following in your footsteps. And I tell them very emphatically, my footsteps are full. Those footsteps are heavy. <laughs> right. So, Ethan, what were you reading as a young person? Uh, a lot of R.A. Salvatore and then uh, some of the Robert Jordan Wheel of Time series and then any any fantasy that I could stick my nose in that I was going out and finding it. And when did you both, what age did you both start really getting into writing? I'm sure you had to write stuff at school, essays, etc. But when did you start sure. writing for your own amazement? 20... Can you tell us 2017? Sure, yeah, 2017, 2018, I think. I got back from my first deployment uh, over in Kuwait and Bahrain, and I had gotten into Dungeons and & Dragons, and I was like, oh, I really like the storytelling and, and just thinking on your feet. And then uh, I wrote out a scene where there's two people who are fighting. It's actually the intro of my first book that I wrote. And I sent it to my dad and said, hey, do you think I should keep going? And he's like, you should write out a whole book. And I was like, all right, I think I got enough information stuck in my head. And I've read enough books to kind of put something out there that's semi-entertaining. And then uh, at the same time, uh, my dad showed me what he was writing, which was some, some memories of his his uh first deployment right dad mm -hmm. yep first deployment and uh we both kind of just started writing together egging each other on yep the so uh were you people, were you already writing christopher at that stage no i was inspired by my son wow that's so cool that, usually sons are inspired by their dads you were inspired <laughs> by your son that's right the keeper of the light was the first short story that i wrote yeah yeah. yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to publish the Iraq stories. I was sort of writing them by my by myself for myself or for Ethan and both of us. But uh, yeah, it uh, it turned into a book. And so, did you both have books published before you decided to do this one together? Yes, you did. So, mm -hmm. is this the first yeah. collaboration? It is. Yes. And why did so you I, decide to do that? So my cousin and I were writing a bunch of short stories and I was enjoying the process of just exploring different worlds than the one that I was already writing in. And so I was like, hey, we should keep writing this. And my cousin kind of fell off a little bit, didn't write as much. And uh, so I tagged my dad and said, hey, we should keep writing some short stories. And then eventually just publish all of them. And then we did. <laughs> it's as simple it's, as that. Uh, great because we are similar enough to keep the same track, but different enough to bring in different perspectives in there. And as an author, it's hard to have that paradigm shift to, uh, to see from a different character's view. And if you have someone who understands the story you're trying to tell, but can also see it from that new perspective, it really turned out I, I like a lot of those stories yeah they're great yes. they turned out and at the beginning of the book it says i wonder if you can work out which were written by the father and which were written by the son and i had no idea and still have no idea apart from now i know that book learning was yours christopher was it was it a 50 50 or are there, is, is half of them one and half of the other or is it 60 40 what's the split most of it, I don't think we could separate out anymore. 
Yeah, a lot of it kind of started to meld together. You can take what the seed was originally and who, who created the seed story, mm-hmm. and I think that's about 55, 45, yeah. uh, just because my dad wrote a bunch more, and we kind of had to sift through his a little bit to figure out which ones were going to stick in the in the book. But, but he's pretty cool. these really cool ideas because he's got the the dungeon master D D and D mindset. So he's got these great stories, and I just get fascinated with them, and I play with them. And sometimes I'll send it to him, and like that's not at all what I was thinking, Dad. We're gonna we're gonna right. scrap that. But sometimes it works. Did yeah. you have did you have what during the process of of doing the book? Did you have any awkward conversations where there was a story that maybe one of you thought? wasn't quite it and had to tell the other one, which would be a difficult conversation for a father and son to have. No, I think we wholeheartedly agreed on everything that got scrapped and wholeheartedly agreed on everything that stayed. Um, I think we've had, I wouldn't even call them tough conversations. We have real conversations about what in our writing styles resonates more. And we've discussed how to improve our writing style, but nothing so harsh as like hey this this sucks yeah (laughs) we need to change this (laughs) you didn't have that well that's good yeah Yeah. i suppose it would help that you're in different states though (laughs) were were you in different states when you put it together oh yeah most of the time yeah 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 so there weren't the face-to-face uh conversations and and the the creative conversations what was it done down the phone or, or similar to this well, phone, email. It was, I don't know, some of the, the value of older conversation where you had to sit down and write out your response and, and think about it before you sent it. That was helpful uh, just because people in this day and age require instant feedback. And I'm 50 and I still find myself doing that. But we both have, were patient with each other and let the ideas come out so yeah, we never really had conversations that were tough. Yeah. Right. And how do you think your military experience has helped you as writers? Well, we're both physical. I mean, Ethan's a black belt, a martial arts instructor, and we both really, truly understand tactics. And so uh one of the best things about ethan is he's the leonardo da vinci of 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 writing because he gets all those technical things and he's very in touch with the kinesthetic effects you know what the body is supposed to be doing and it makes it real and those kind of things are are things that i just sort of gloss over so it's it's a huge advantage to have that there's a, be a tremendous right. amount of discipline in, in getting a book from an idea to an actual book. Did military discipline help you and play a part? <laughs> Why are you so, laughing? So I thought it was a fair so, question. No, no, no. It's, it's <laughs> funny. It's very funny because uh, so we're both officers yeah. um, who are notoriously disciplined at procrastinating. <laughs> right. Um, so if, if you wait until the last, to... you only have to do it for a minute. That's right. right. <laughs> so we didn't really set any kind of deadlines. We basically pushed it off as far as we could until it all just came gushing out in a huge, just unbridled flow of information where we just couldn't contain it. And it it was actually pretty quick. When we finally sat down to write everything out, it goes extremely quick. So like, I mean, I take um, the other books that we wrote. Um, Season of the Gunslinger probably took you a couple months. Uh, yeah. The longest change part. Took, yeah, and mine took a couple months, and those are both almost 600-page books where we just sat down and said, all right, I'm finally ready to, to write, and then we couldn't, couldn't control it anymore. So when you say discipline, I assume people think, oh, you know, I adhere to the strict schedule and I make sure that I fe- meet phase lines. Absolutely not. <laughs> right. Mission. I, I've spoken to a lot of authors, obviously, and, and a lot of them do say they have to write a certain amount of words per day. So you didn't have a quota like that that you tried to hit. No way. 
And how long did it take from start to finish? The first story got started a long time ago, but when we decided to publish the collection, I don't know, five months at most. Yeah, five. Yeah, maybe. And that was you were finishing up your last one. Right, finishing up the stories, going through the editing process. It, I mean, it really didn't take that long once we decided to do it. Like I said, disciplined procrastinators. I'll tell you what went very quickly is selecting the narrator. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Head and shoulders above everything we found on ACX. It was like, that's the storyteller right there. That's the guy. Yep. I can't even remember what the audition was. Which story was the audition? We did two, Lucky Lucy and, and a snippet of accents and, oh man, hold on, Dinner in Hell. Dinner in Hell. And oh, you did, I think you did Lucky Lucy. Yeah. Right, right. Really yeah. cool. That's right, the sci-fi one, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 got the, I did the story because I do, I only do one audition a day now. Cause I have to, cause otherwise if I get too many, I can't, I can't fit them all in. And, uh, and I remember, yeah, after that one thinking, yeah, this would be a nice one to get, but I kind of just do the auditions and then forget about them. And then when people get back to me and say, yeah, we'd like you to do the book. I'm like, I'm knocked out because it's just such a, first of all, it's like, wow, the pressure, this is, you know, this is people's work here. This is what they've put everything into. And I hope I can do it justice. And, uh, and I hope I did. How did you find the process of once we got into it and got it going? Is that okay? Oh, oh yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Um, oh, I, yeah. I, I, I really, because they were just great. The great thing with the short stories is, or a collection of short stories, is that is the, is the variety, for me, as a, as a performer, to be kind of, you know, poncy about it, but is, is to know, because if you do, you know, often I'll do a long book and, and I might do an eight or 10, or there's one I'm working on right now is a 14 hour book. And it's pretty much the same four or five characters. But with short stories, it's like every one, there's, you know, at least one, maybe three or four new characters each story. And that is so much fun because I have to read the whole thing, sit down and go, how's this guy going to be or how's she going to be? And yeah. You enjoyed uh, Mick and Patty. The Irish one, yeah. A collection of <laughs> basically what you did was you you wove together irish jokes and, yeah. and put it in a setting where they could uh they could come to life yeah that was fun that was really well, fun the majority of my background is is irish despite the uh, german last name i'm about 70 percent irish according to uh, ancestry.com yeah so i heard a lot of the irish jokes the one about the donuts and it, i just thought these could all fit together and it could be <laughs> one crazy day for Murphy. So that's another one of yours. So we know about two of yours. So Ethan, which ones are you most proud of? Uh, the contract. Do you know what? The contract, yeah. I think I said it to you in an email, that was my favorite of them all. That was the very last story. And I, we'd been through, along the way, I'd, my favorites kept changing because, you know, I, I thought it just kept getting better and better. But then that one about a schoolgirl who puts out a hitman on a teacher. But then, yep. then the story itself of why and uh, the reaction and yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a great story. So where did the inspiration for that one come from? I, I dare, I'm dare. Sure. I, no, no, no. Yeah, what, what's the story there? Uh, so this is one that we, my cousin and I kind of like, we thought about and then I wrote out the story but we found, uh, we just Googled a strange prompt for a short story, and it was somebody hires a hitman, and it's some random amount of change. And I was like, okay, all right, I can take that, and I can expand that into a full-fledged story, even though that's not much to go on. I, I think I can make this interesting. And I started to, think about, started to think about why someone would want to hire a hitman, and who would be the person that would hire a hitman in change? And I just came up with, well, of course it's a, it's a young, it's a young person who did this. Yeah. So it, it was interesting to get into the mindset of a, of a, I think I made her eight or something. Yeah. 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 
an eight-year-old and then in the mind of somebody who would be in the profession of, of killing people so yeah no it's it's a great story but yeah the, the the Irish one was good too but the way it opens with um, with dinner hall because that that kind of sets you up I read that one and I thought to myself these could go anywhere these stories could go anywhere because that was such such a bizarre concept for people to have spoons as as hands you know and um i thought this kind of this kind of sets it up for a wild ride and i like the way you did that was that hard to do to, to work out the order of where to place each of the stories i don't think it took us more than an hour <laughs> yeah uh, like they're kind of in genres some are yes. set in the present some are futuristic some are old and some are just like dinner in hell it's just we try to think of a way to describe it and uh were we talking about einstein and thought experiments and yeah i don't remember what we were talking about oh and... thought experiments yeah. Duh, of course that's what we yeah. should do <laughs> yeah. yeah i also liked another one of the ones early in the book i liked unknown because it's a story about a storyteller Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, yeah, I can really have some fun with this character. And I was thinking of when I did that one, I was thinking of, of kind of British Shakespearean actors, you know, the kind of the John Hurts and the, to go further back, the Richard Burton's and, you know, that kind of character because he just felt like he he was one of those. So that was that was a lot of fun to do. And I really enjoyed doing that one. Um, when I heard that one, I called Ethan and I said, wow, yeah. that was because you just you took it and and suddenly it was that magical storyteller. And it was you were at the campfire and there was this guy and he was just had this audience of children and he was just doing this massive story. It was it was fantastic. Oh, thank you for that, because I actually really did enjoy uh, performing that one just because of that character. Um, it was just so, that's a, story, so nice. yeah. that's a story that's really very, the two of us melded together. Cause I think Ethan had the original idea and then I started thinking of the pit and the pendulum and we went back and forth and it was, that was very much the two of us. Yep. So, and I so, think, so I'm sorry. I said, I think that really cemented why we picked you as a narrator, because I think we both discussed it. That was not the character that we had in our head. But then when you mm -hmm. brought it to life, we were like, all right, hey, that works. That was perfect. What was the character you had in your head? Ours was uh, less Shakespearean and more like a yeah. dark, I, I... cowled man telling a story like, like this, hunched over with slow movements and really just like... yeah letting the ambiance of the of the firelight kind of tell the story mm -hmm. for him whereas you brought it to life I, I could see the guy almost yelling into the night when you were narrating some <laughs> yeah. of the stuff it was it, like i said it was perfect but it was so yeah. different from what we were thinking when i heard it i was like that's what it should have been that's exactly yep. what it should have been <laughs> wow that's a hell of a compliment that's not why we're doing this to give me compliments we're doing this to make people aware of a great <laughs> book of short stories that's called uh, Curious Tales. So what's next for you guys then? What's, is, is, uh, is there a novel on the cards? Is it maybe one of the stories going to be expanded to, to a novel or is it more short stories? What, what is it? We haven't really talked about what our collaborative effort will be next. We've kind of entertained the idea of taking some of those short stories and expanding them. Um, I know that I'm working on the second book of my other series whenever I have time. And then my dad has another other book that he was working on. And then I know that he's got some other ideas floating around, but we don't know. Have any of your other yeah. books be become um, audio books yet? Every single one of them are audio Every books. single one audio books. Okay. So you're yeah. old hands at the old audio book business then. <laughs> Sure, <laughs> with our <laughs> with our four collected audiobooks. That's right? that's Three, that's four, still yeah, that's four. still quite a few compared to most people whose whose number is still sure. sitting at zero. 
Um, <laughs> four's pretty good. Four is sure. pretty good. Well, it's great to meet you and find out more about you. And it's lucky that we could do this because I know you're both busy guys with your military commitments. And how did we end up with this amount of time where the three of us are all able to do that? I mean, I, mine's very flexible because I work from <laughs> home. But uh, but you two guys, you've got Uncle Sam to answer to. How did you manage to get the, the time off at the same time for us to do this now? Okay. Uh, so... I'm on leave right now. I requested some time off to to do this. And so it's not easy. I'm retired and I'm in uh, the private security and I'm in between uh, my last job and some training that I have to do. So, Right. So that works well. So that works well for everybody. Oh, so you're actually not, you're, you're a retired Marine, Christopher. I'm old and fat, yes. Because I would never pick you. You do not look like a retired person to me. <laughs> I mean that well, as a compliment. I'm, I'm retired. I'm not tired. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Hey, well, great to talk to you. And it's a fabulous book. You can get it on Audible. And in fact, I'm going to put a link, if you're watching on YouTube, in the comments there. There's a link where if you sign up to Audible for 30 days, you can get the download the book for free. And it's a free, it's a free trial. Sign up to Audible for a free trial. You don't pay anything. You, there's a free trial to Audible for 30 days, and you can download the book for free, and uh, and check it out. There are some fabulous stories in there, and they will keep you guessing. And from the very beginning, you realise you're in for something special from the first story, and then right the way to the end. The last one I think is my favourite. So it, it's it's bookended, start and finish, and along the way. You go on one hell of a journey with some amazing characters and just some, some great stories. Christopher and Ethan Westhoff, thank you very much.